everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. Have you been wanting to frame an object that isn't part of Nina's default database? How about be able to use plate solving to easily center a planet and get it ready for your favorite video capture software? Or be able to frame a comet with the click of a button? Well today, we're going to be learning how to connect Stellarium into Nina in just a few easy steps. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Now let's jump into my computer and learn how to connect Stellarium into Nina. Connecting Stellarium into Nina is actually a very simple process. First, you're going to want to make sure to download Stellarium onto your computer. If you already have Stellarium on your computer, make sure you have the latest and greatest version. To get Stellarium on your computer, what we're going to do is go to our favorite web browser and go to google.com. From there, we're going to go ahead and type in Stellarium, and you should see it pop up. If you don't, just continue typing until you do. Go ahead and click on Stellarium, and we want to go to stellarium.org. We'll click on Stellarium Astronomy Software, and that'll bring you to the Stellarium homepage. From here, you can see the different versions that are available. In this case, Stellarium 24.2 is the latest and greatest version. Up at the top, you'll see the different operating systems that you can use, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Make sure to choose the correct operating system, and once you find yours, go ahead and click on the appropriate icon. That'll bring up a downloads box in the top right, depending on your system, and that'll look like this. You'll see Stellarium downloading, and once it's done, go ahead and click Open File. You may or may not get a window in the center of your screen that asks if you want to allow the application to make changes to your device. Go ahead and click Yes, and then follow the Install Wizard. Once you're done with the Install Wizard, you'll have Stellarium on your computer. Go ahead and open Stellarium, and that'll bring you to the home page. To get Stellarium connected into Nina, the first thing that we want to do is hover over the bottom, and that'll bring up your toolbar. Now, a lot of instructions say to hit F2, and in some cases, F2 won't work. You'll actually get the command that F2 is actually supposed to be used for. That's okay. If you get that, this little icon in the bottom that looks like a right angle, if you hover over that, that'll bring another menu on the left side of the screen. We want to go to Configuration Window, and that'll bring up this window here. Go ahead and click on Plugins, and scroll down, and click on Remote Control. From here, you want to make sure that Load at Startup is checked. If it is not checked, go ahead and check Load at Startup. Then you're going to want to go ahead and exit out of the configuration screen, go back to the bottom, and click on the power icon at the right of the toolbar to reset Stellarium. Once Stellarium closes out, go ahead and reopen Stellarium, go back to the bottom toolbar to the right angle, and then go up to configuration window. Make sure you go back to plugins, remote control, and ensure that load at startup is still checked. If it is, click on Configure, and then make sure you uh, check Server Enabled, and check Enable Automatically on Startup. Take note of the port number, and I have not seen any issues with port number uh, that will come back to this in just a second. So once you have Server Enabled checked and Enable Automatically on Startup checked, go ahead and click Save Settings and then exit out again. Go back to the bottom toolbar and click on the power icon to close out of Stellarium. Reopen Stellarium, go back to the bottom toolbar and we're going to check our work. Go back to the configuration window, plugins, remote control, ensure that load at startup is checked, go back into configure and ensure that enable or server enabled is still checked and enable automatically on startup is still checked. If all items are all checked that we went over, we can go ahead and exit out of our configuration window and bring up Nina. Once Nina is up, we're going to go to Options, 
Equipment. And over at Planetarium, we're going to click the drop down and select Stellarium. The port number that we took note of in Stellarium, make sure that that matches. If it does not, adjust as necessary within Nina and or Stellarium. If we go back into Stellarium, we can now hit the uh, D, the letter D, and that'll display our deep sky objects. We can go ahead and choose a deep sky object. We'll choose Dark Horse Nebula, and then we can go ahead and zoom in if we want. We can center it with the space bar. And if you have your camera information input into Stellarium, it'll actually show you a basic field of view that you'll have. If we go back into Nina and we go to framing, this little icon right over here, right next to coordinates, if you hover over, it says get coordinates from the planetarium. If we click that, it'll actually bring the object that you selected in Stellarium into the framing wizard within Nina. And from here, you'll see coordinates acquired from Stellarium. We can just exit out of that. And you can go ahead and frame your object as normal. Let's go back into Stellarium and we can actually go to the bottom toolbar and as a side note, this is a good example because you can see it blocks. This information over here, if you go into the um, main window in Stellarium and right click, it'll make that information disappear. We can also, on this left toolbar, go to search and we can type in an object that we want to image for the night. Let's say NGC 6960. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and we have NGC 6960, we can go back into Nina and click get coordinates from the planetarium. And we can also go ahead and frame NGC 6960 as we want as well. And we can slew center, we can go ahead slew center and rotate if you have an automatic rotator or you can even do manual rotation. I have a video on that as well which I'll put a link to in the description of this video. And we can even add to our sequencer. Now, one option that Nina does not have, if we go into Stellarium and we go into search, we can search for a planet. We'll take Jupiter here, for example. And you can see the right ascension and declination coordinates. We go into Nina and we can get from the planetarium and we can even go ahead and frame planets. We can slew and center, so we can use plate solving to find them easily. And this is a very good way to actually uh, be able to frame objects that Nina may not necessarily have in its database. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Are you already using Stellarium with Nina? What questions do you have? Did you learn anything new? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.